In this video, we're going to discuss the immunological rejection of transplanted tissue. All right. So let's say we have a donor patient and we have a recipient patient. And the recipient patient has a bad heart for some reason. You know, their, their heart's kind of uh, worn out, if you will. And this donor recipient uh, has passed away or about ready to die, and but his heart is good. So we'll draw a little heart here. Of course, this is not how a real heart looks, but good enough for uh, animation and cartoonish figures. But we have a, a donor heart here, and this patient dies, passes away, and he wished that his body be used for organ donation. And so this recipient gladly recepts his heart, and so the surgeon will open up the chest to take out the heart, clip all the arteries and the vessels and the veins and everything, and the nerves, take it over, or suture up the corresponding vessels, and the recipient hopefully receives the heart. Now, because these are two different people, there is going to be an immunological rejection. This happens in all patients except identical twins. Identical twins. Because they have the same DNA, so their major histability complexes and their their proteins are pretty much the same. So the rejection of the of the tissue involves both cell mediated if you remember cell mediated uh, T cell mediated is type 4 hypersensitivity and antibody mediated is type 2 so the antibody mediated hypersensitivity reactions and the cell mediated uh, reactions they're directed against the histocompatibility molecules on this the foreign heart. This comes from Robin's Basic Pathology, 8th edition, page 131. Allografts, just a little terminology here, allografts are transplanted tissue from the same species. So sometimes in the literature they'll say an allograft, blah, 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 blah. That just means that there was a transplanted tissue of the same species. So there's two types of uh, immunological rejection pathways that we're going to talk about. The first type is, let me get a better color here, is this direct pathway and the second pathway is the indirect pathway. So let's go through this. Of the direct pathway, there's an antigen presenting cell in the graft. Okay, and this antigen presenting cell remember has major histability complex one molecules because this is all cells have this all cells have this and they also have a major histability two complex and this is only in APCs or antigen presenting cells like macrophages, dendritic cells, monocytes, neutrophils these cells all have the major histability complex too. And remember that the CD8 T cell, these are T cells, correspond with the class 1 and the CD4 communicate with the class 2. So you're going to have this antigen presenting cell that is going to uh, a place on its major histability complex this foreign molecule. So the CD8 T cells of the recipient patient are going to recognize this and then what they're going to do is remember that these they turn into cytotoxic cells. So what they'll do, let's just say for example these CD8 cells they're going to be uh, warned, if you will, of the the foreign invader. They're going to be. They're going to know that this is foreign, and so this major histability or the CD8 cell is going to 
recognize that this part is foreign and it's going to kill this individual cell. Remember that, so in this case, in just this scenario, this would actually kill this cell because the, the CD8 cell, the CD8 plus T cells, when they are presented with a foreign object on the major histability class, they will kill that individual cell. So that antigen presenting cell will die. And then it will be warned, it will be sensitized, if you will, and then it will go around, start killing all of the cells that have this major histability complex molecule on them th th that is foreign. So then they'll come through and they'll and they'll attack, let's say this is a kidney that was transplanted. They'll go in and they'll notice that all these cells have this foreign uh, major histability complex. And so they will kill each one of these cells, these CD8, these CD8 plus or these cytotoxic lymphocytes that causes endotheliitis, inflammation of the endothelium as they kill these cells, you know, we're going to go under undergo a cascade process here. Coagulation is going to happen. You're going to get inflammation of this blood vessel. And ultimately, you're going to start getting thrombosis, which is going to start clogging off this artery. Uh, you're going to have a big immune response here. And these CD8 cells are going to be uh, secreting cell uh, cytokines that are going to recruit other, other cells. And, you know, as these cells die, this is going to recruit other leukocytes. And so this whole inflammation process is going to go out of control. And you're going to get graft ischemia. So the graft is going to die because of black, lack of blood flow to the area. And the CD8 cells, they'll continue. You know, they'll go to now to the renal tubule of the kidney. They'll recognize these major histability complexes foreign, and they will kill each one of these cells individually, one at a time, because that's what the CD8 cells do. They all respond to the major histability complex one, and they will kill the individual cell. Also remember, just as a reminder, that these major histability complexes type one are on all cells. So if this was not a graph, let's just say this is just a different example. If this was a virus in here, these major histability types one complexes, see this cell will constantly just kind of grab proteins that are being produced and they will plop them up here on this major histability complex so that these CD8 cells will come around and just randomly screen, making sure that everything, all the cells in your body are doing what they're supposed to. Because what a virus will do, the virus will come in here, inject its DNA or RNA or whatever, and will take over this cell. And so the way that the CD8 cell knows, remember that this is kind of an, in, an intracellular process, killing system, is the CD8 cell will recognize that this is foreign and then kill that cell. So virus infected cells, tumor cells, these CD8 cells will take out. But anyway, in the case of this graft, they'll go around and they'll, t they'll notice that all these major histability complexes are foreign, and so they will start killing all of these cells. So that's kind of the direct pathway, and part of the CD4, the CD4 pathway will also be direct. So let's talk about that. So now that the CD4 cell, remember, corresponds to the class uh, major histability class 2, and the major histability class 2 molecules are on uh, antigen presenting cells, this will be the CD4, CD4 plus helper T cells. Remember that this is kind of the delayed type hypersensitivity reaction. This is an example of such type 4. And so what happens is that once these CD4 cells are kind of sensitized to this foreign invader, they will secrete interferon gamma. Interferon cam gamma is a strong activator for macrophages. So what's going to happen is this, that was a little, let me do that a little cleaner. These activated macrophages, they're going to come and they are going to destroy also these these uh, 
in this case, the renal tubule, they're going to destroy the cells and the kidney is, the transplanted kidney is not going to function. This is a delayed type hypersensitivity reaction, type 4. And so what's the big difference? The CD8 kind of kills the cells individually as, cytotoxo, as cytotoxic lymphocytes. The CD, CD4 cells, they don't kill directly. They secrete cytokines. Cytokines come and activate and recruit other uh, killers, you know, macrophages, other, other cells. And they cause inflammation to happen. So they're kind of they kind of indirectly kill, if you will. So these activated macrophages are going to, you know, secrete their little lysosomal products and destroy these cells, and inflammation is going to happen, and coagulation is going to happen, and thrombosis and graft ischemia is going only, only to be exacerbated. So that's kind of the direct pathway. So what's the indirect pathway? The indirect pathway is you have these graft cells here. You have these graft cells. And you have the recipient antigen-presenting cell. So this is going to be the recipient's anti antigen-presenting cell. And they are going to chew up you know they're going to this this little guy is going to be notified that this this is foreign here so he's going to chew up one of these cells uh you know break up these little molecules inside and then he's going to plop those up here on his major histability complexes and then the CD4 cell is going to be floating around and bumping into these and being oh hey we got an invader here and so they're going to kind of undergo the same process. Now remember part of the CD4 helper T cells responsibility not only to secrete cytokines but also to help B lymphocytes um, become warned if you will and the B lymphocyte will undergo change into a plasma cell this is an antibody mediated hypersensitivity type 2 reaction and the plasma cell will secrete tons of antibodies they will secrete antibodies like nobody's business and so the antibodies will come and what the antibodies will do is that they will bind to these major histability complexes so that as these macrophages or you know these other cells will come by not only do these antibodies cause kind of a topographical problem or they you know because they're big and bulky and they're attaching to these cells that might cause uh, a problem but these are flag for pickup these antibodies these antibodies act as flags for destruction flags for destruction so these antibodies will cause uh, our flags for destruction so these aggravated macrophages will say okay so this is the cell I gotta kill they'll go in there and destroy it by secreting enzymes by gobbling up through pseudopods they have many ways of killing things and this endothelial and so endothelial uh, damage will occur and in the same case you'll get thrombosis and graft ischemia so that's kind of how graft grafts um, get attacked by the recipient's immune system. And so bottom line, big picture, is all patients except identical twins have some form of immunological rejection to transplanted tissue. Now there's certain uh, tests that you can run that will kind of see if the donor and the recipient are kind of matched up to eliminate this because everybody's major histability complexes type uh, 1 and 2 are different. Are, are different. Everybody's is different. No two individuals are the same except identical twins. So there's 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 these labs that you can run that will kind of see if the donor is similar enough to the recipient to kind of minimize this. 
but now that the drugs are getting so so good and technology is so good if you have a major organ like a heart a liver you know cases kidneys they'll just transplant it over especially if the anatomy is the same you know cuz you can have a the superior vena cava you know this uh, vein that enter here if you have the superior vena cava that's right here and on this patient the superior vena cava was clear over here well that might not be a good match anatomically but you know in the in the in the case that there are the similar they won't really care about how different these major histability complexes are and they'll just do the transplant and they'll just dose them with high meds so that you know, they'll immunosuppress the patient so that they that this uh, graft will take so that they can go on living and so and, and the rejection it's attacked at the major histability complex level and that's kind of the big big thing is that the immune system somehow identifies these major histability complexes and attacks them and that's kind of where the the rubber meets the road if you will okay we'll see you in the next video